You're a grown woman. You're a grown woman. Get over yourself. Stop trying to put all your responsibility on everybody else when you decided to make your own decision and you decided that this was going to be right for you. How can you in any world decide that it's somebody else's fault for something that you did? You decided to gain the weight, you decided to get surgery, and you decided to gain that weight back. Why is it somebody else's fault? It's not. It's your fault. There is no causal relationship between the size of your body and how healthy you are. There is a very weak correlation between the size of your body and how healthy you are. So in my arena of communication and persuasion, we would identify this as a logical fallacy. I think these people have some kind of like dementia, like early onset dementia, like the amount of calories that they're consuming, the amount of greased up food these guys put in their mouths on a daily basis has to be doing something to their brains. I know it's most definitely doing something to their bodies, but the brain is most definitely like it's got to be fogged up to the next degree. Anyway, let's read what this person has to say. We learned something interesting here. So actively want to be healthy is somehow wrong. Make it make sense. And this person's response was, there's no causation from being fat to having poor health, which is insane to me. If you're stacking on double or even triple the amount of weight, which you should be weighing, and this this is a you know, woman, I'm gonna guess that she's an average height, 5'4 for a woman, 5'5. Five, five. You wish, you, you know, if you're a woman, I gotta keep it a buck. Um, unless you're like a professional athlete, and you're like a power lifter. In these very extreme scenarios, there are very few scenarios where a woman should be over 200 pounds. And I'm going to sit there and say also that many men should not also be over 200 pounds. Like if your body weight starts with two, that's an issue. Okay? Let's just keep that far and away. Most guys don't even need to be above that. I know a lot of fat guys are in the twos. They think it's cool because they're like six foot. Some of these guys deserve to be like 180. They're just stacking on weight. But it doesn't matter. If you're sitting here trying to tell me, I'm going to give you an example. If you owned a car... Okay, most most Americans own cars. Let's say you have a car and you stack, you just throw in cinder blocks, you pop the trunk, you throw in cinder blocks, you take out the rear seats, you throw in the cinder blocks, you throw in cinder blocks, thousands of pounds on top of the car. You go down a hill. I want to ask you a question. How many times do you think you can hit that brake and actually stop at the end of that hill? Probably not many times, right? Eventually the brakes are going to give out, something's going to snap, the car is going to eventually get snapped up. The same thing happens to your body. You can't deny that having extra weight on your body is not going to impede the ability of your body in some significant way. Um, it's fine. If you want to be fat, be fat. But like these bullshit excuses or reasons why you want to stay fat don't make any sense at all. Like just keep it what it is. You want to be fat. That's fine. Don't shit on everybody else and try to make it seem like you guys are not having health complications because of your weight. That is baloney. Big baloney. To come to this conclusion, you are making a false equivalency between the size of your body and how healthy you are. I am a firm believer that eating nutritiously dense foods from a variety of food categories that bring vitamins and nutrients into your body, along with exercising in whatever way that you are capable of doing that, are wonderful things. Cool. Choosing not to smoke or drink in excess, also wonderful things. Awesome. All those things I agree with. Eating nutritious foods and working out however you can, those are super amazing, good things that everybody can be doing. If this person is doing all those things and they're still obese, issues, issues. Showering regularly sure. to maintain. Yeah, wash yourself. I mean, that might, it, it might be worse for some other people, though. Like, I wash once a day. I don't need to. I could probably take a shower. I could probably take a shower like once every week. And I feel like if you walked up to me and you're like, <sighs> you would not notice a smell. I am physically incapable of smelling bad i feel like most days there have been some days though where i was going to the gym and maybe i was like stretching out it's like ah and i smell some kind of aroma coming from the back side of my armpits and i was like oh my god i forgot to put on deodorant sometimes you forget to put on deodorant and i'm not going to a grocery store or like a rite aid or a walgreens to pick up a new stick when the stick that i have is perfectly good i just forgot to wear it but you know what it's not even that bad because I know some guys that have made sticks of deodorants last over three years. So having a stick last me like a month or two months, that's just pretty good. That's pretty good. In a hygienic health, wonderful thing. True. I also know that evaluating your health based on the size that you are or the amount that you weigh are both problematic and harmful to yourself and your mental health. I think that these people have a very weird way of defining what health is. If you're looking at your weight and you see that your weight is big, like if you get on that scale and you look down, oh my God, that shit is, that shit is big. You weighing 200, 250, 300 pounds and you're looking at that and you're going, this is bad for my mental health, evaluating your health based off of the weight that you are. Dude, um, 
I don't know what else to tell you then it's that's just what it is like you're gonna have to look at the weight and you're gonna have to confront the scale and you're gonna have to tell that scale that it's either the scale is wrong or you're wrong who's which one do you think is more accurate you being wrong or the scale you're gonna have to do something about it and I just said it's probably hard to look at that that number and not correlate that number with problems because I know a lot of the times these people are having issues. They're looking at themselves in the mirror. They're seeing the big belly. They're seeing the bigness. They're weighing double, triple what they should weigh. They're loving the foods. They're throwing down their mouth, which I don't even really understand how you could after the times that like, it's like anything in life. Like if you smoke a lot of weed, like Snoop Dogg, eventually the high becomes harder and harder and harder to chase because you're getting farther and farther away. You're building up an immunity in the same way that these people are just body slamming copious amounts of greased up onion side dishes of foods and all this other stuff. I don't understand how these people even have taste buds anymore. Like the, the taste buds on their tongue have to be completely obliterated off the frequency and the amount of greased up delicacies they're throwing back in their mouth. It's got to be, I, don't, I, I can't even believe sometimes that these people can continuously eat like that. But it probably just comes down to, I've eaten like this my whole life. I might as well continue to eat like this for my whole life, which is incredibly sad, but it's really how these people live. So it's okay if you don't want to look at the number on the scale because it makes you feel bad, but like, sitting there going, it makes me feel bad. I'm having poor mental health by looking at the number on the scale. You're trading one badness for another badness. Wouldn't it be better to at least like fortify your mentality in, in a significant way to where when you do look at that number on the scale, you try not to like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't know. It's much harder. <laughs> it's much harder to accept one over the other, right? At least when you're looking at that scale, you can reckon, you can recognize this is a problem. I, I don't even understand what you would even do if you looked at the scale. Like, I can't believe it. I'm so fat. Or like, you feel bad now, dude. Get over it. You're a grown woman. What are you talking about? I know that making the goal to be smaller instead of to be healthier. Which is synonymous in most cases. Like in most cases, if you are a big person, being smaller is going to improve your health in a very drastic way. Just from a general point of view. The fact that you don't have to push as much weight upstairs or have to push weight in general down the street or if you're walking anywhere, doing anything in general, it's going to be way easier to push, I don't know, a 150-pound body compared to a 250-pound body because you're stacking on an additional 100 pounds. And oftentimes, I see these people, they fail to realize this because they're thinking about things like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, all this other stuff. And I'm not saying those things are not attributed to being obese, which they are. But oftentimes, they're only looking at those things and they're going, I don't have that. You know, I don't have this issue. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have this and that. And I always go, you're 22. Like, obviously, you're not going to have these issues right now. But most of the time, these issues do just come out abruptly. Like, you go to the doctor maybe once a year, sometimes even twice a year. I have a friend that didn't go to the doctor for five years, six years at a time. So if you're not going to the doctor and you're not getting these things regularly checked, it's going to come out of nowhere. And you're going to wake up one day and you're going to have diabetes and things such and so forth. But you didn't know you had it. So... Um, you can look at it like that in the sense of like, I don't have these issues, but you're probably going to have them one day, but right now you don't, that's fine. But what about the simple fact that you're stacking on double or triple what you should be weighing on a daily basis? You don't think that's going to like negatively affect you in any way? That's crazy. You guys are on some different shit. Is harmful to your health and your mental health. Stop focusing on my mental health. Like, let's be honest for a second. You got a real big problem with the physical health. The mental health, I agree, should be addressed in a very significant way. Everybody needs to talk to somebody. You should talk to somebody. But like, dude, what you're doing right now is you're trying to dismiss the physical health in the in the by by like trying to scale it out. Like, oh, the physical health is important, but you're not even talking about the physical health because you don't even think there's a problem there. And then you're going, but the mental health, oh, the mental health should be like way scaled way more differently. You're trading one for the other, and then you're trying to like make it seem like the other one is not as is not as big of a deal compared to the mental health. Dude, if you have poor physical health, we've seen tons of studies that correlate that if you have poor physical health, that's going to correlate a lot to your mental health because you're waking up, terrible, disgusting hormones every single fucking day. You don't, you don't do shit about yourself. You're just sitting around slopped, sedentary. Your belly button is big as fuck, deep, massive. You got people living in there. You're body slamming big ass pizza rolls, whatever the fuck you want to do. You, you, it's like BBC corn dogs and shit like that. It's like, what are you talking about? You're obviously going to have some problems, man. I know that I cannot walk up to somebody. That's a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all you got to say right there. Just end it there. Just end it right there. That's all you got to say. You're going to be laying down. Just say that. Is harmful to your health and your mental health. I know that I cannot walk up to somebody, look at them and determine whether or not they are healthier. I can. I can. 100%. If this woman's going to say some straight bullshit baloney hogwash of looking at somebody's physical shape is not a way to determine their their actual health, that is a such a dumb statement. Because, okay, I will agree in certain scenarios, somebody can be very unhealthy and it's ambiguous. You can't see it upon them, right? 
But in this particular case and scenario, if somebody's obese, I know for a fact that person is unhealthy. I know for a fact because there's no other way you can define somebody that's weighing double or triple what they should weigh on a daily basis as anything other than being unhealthy. So just if that's what you're going to say, be quiet. It doesn't, that, that you can't say that. That makes no Walk sense. Walk up to somebody, look at them and determine whether or not they are healthier or unhealthier than the person standing next to them. <laughs> sure. If you're like in the cancer ward and there's somebody that's like down to the bones, right? And there's a fat person. I'm, yeah, I'm sure the cancer, per the patient might be, yeah, probably, probably a lot iller, probably have a lot more sicknesses and probably a lot less healthy. Sure. But like, what are you talking about right now? What niche scenario are you looking at somebody that's obese compared to somebody that's of a straight size, a normal size on the street and going, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't really, I don't really know which one is healthier and which one's not healthier. That's like looking at one man. Okay. You're in like a hotel room and there's two men. Okay. On each side of the corners, right? One guy over here, he's dressed nice. He's wearing a suit and tie. He's drinking coffee. He's just, you know, on his phone. And on the other corner, there's a guy on his knees, naked, dick out, slopping down three black men. No problem, right? He's, he's literally choking three men down in his mouth, meat massaging them. It's crazy. And you're going, I just don't know which one is gayer. Like I, I don't really, I, I don't know. Like it, it's a real, it's really ambiguous. I can't really tell. That's what you're basically telling me at this point. Like you, you, you in most scenarios, you're going to know that a fat person is probably most of the time, generally speaking, averages. If they were across all spectrums of our society, the fat person is going to be most of the time unhealthy. And I also know that whether or not somebody is healthy is not a determining factor on whether or not they have value as a human but being. But nobody, nobody's saying that, though. Like, why, why are you bringing up the value of a human being? You're responding to this comment, right? A star's comment. Where are you seeing value of a being a human being? Where is that? This person is literally saying they want to become healthier and you're bringing up value of human beings. This is... What you're doing, I feel it. I real deal feel it because you have to you have to grasp onto a point somehow, some way to make whatever you're saying any type of uh, realisticness. You have to say some bullshit to make what you're saying validified, right? But this, like, I don't even know what you would even want to call this, dude. What, 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 are you, what are you, like, gaslighting everybody into believing that this person is saying some bullshit when we're literally seeing the comment on the screen? You're just coming up with bullshit points right now. Nobody is saying that fat people aren't human beings. Matter of fact, I know you guys are human beings, but I wish you would be more of a human being in the sense of, like, having the joy of doing the things that human beings have to do. Like, walking and, like, going upstairs and working for long periods of time. I know it's probably not the best thing, but you know what I'm saying. Like, these are normal things that people have to do, and sometimes it can be very fun. Like, I know that you might not think that walking upstairs is fun, but it can be fun if you do it in the right settings. But not having the ability to do it at all is tough. And especially complaining about things like, I can't get in my tub anymore because the step, like, you know when people have the tubs and you don't have the open door because you're not, you know, you're not fucking bougie or whatever. I still have to step into my shower, right? That could be very, very taxing for a lot of fat people. Somebody like Amber Lynn probably couldn't even do it at all. I literally saw a video of Amber Lynn saying that she didn't take a shower for an entire year because she was so fat, it was incapable for her to wash herself. Now think about that. I mean, granted, Amber Lynn is a very extreme scenario of that. She could have weighed at 600 pounds at that point in time. I have no fucking idea. So, I mean, obviously anybody at 600 pounds is going to have a huge problem at that weight. But even at, prob even at weights at like 250, 300 pounds, you're experiencing a lot of problems, man. I remember... I remember I was walking with this guy. I knew this guy. He's my best friend. He's a great guy, beautiful man. Um, I'd kiss him on the mouth if I was gay. But that would be Haram. He's Middle Eastern. I remember one time we were walking and we were going, I don't know where we were going, but it was like a few blocks away. And he said, David, you want me to just get an Uber? You want me to, just, I'm like, an Uber? Uh, pfft, no, I think we're good. I think it's like, what are you talking about? Uber is like, I don't know, like five minutes away, 10 minutes down the street. And he's like, ah, I know, but it's not, you know, I don't know, bro. You know, they could be faster. Sure. It probably would be faster to wait here and then get into the car and then drive down the street and then get out of the car. It was a linear path. And I was like, nah, uh, I, I mean, maybe it would be faster, but like, let's just walk. Like you, there's some joys. People, even though I know that having a vehicle and walking might be intimidating for a lot of people, but listen, walking 
is awesome, especially if you're doing it with somebody that also likes walking and then you're seeing things. You might see the homeless guy shooting heroin. You might see a lady yelling at her boyfriend because he didn't do something, which happens a lot apparently, and it never, you can never do anything right, right? It's, I don't know. It's one thing I've learned too. But you're, you, you see a lot of great stuff that you may not be able to see when you're driving because things just kind of go about their way, right? And also, you're taking away one of the key aspects of being a human, which is walking. You know, it's walking and communicating. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like people make their own battles or they make up their own fights to try to make it seem like they have an actual point. It doesn't make sense. Is not a determining factor on whether or not they have value as a human being and deserve to live a life respected and full of autonomy. But nobody's saying that though. Like, I don't know why you would even bring up a point that's not even relevant in any way to the video or the comment that you're even talking about. And like making a smug ass face after you said some bullshit that has absolutely nothing to do with the video is crazy. Like you, you're literally fighting yourself right now. I hope that that clears something. You cleared nothing up. You're, this is nothing. You have absolutely cleared nothing up. You made no points. Let's talk about confidence. I gotta turn it up. Let's talk about confidence. As a fat person, and if you don't know me, hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a fat fashion content creator. And people come into my DMs, comments, on my lives, and they go, Hannah, how do you have so much confidence? And let me tell you, this is not a straight line. I didn't just wake up with confidence one day. Do people even... actually ask, man, you know, you know how offensive that question is? Can we just, like, talk on that for a second? Like, people are coming into her live streams and her comments and going, how do you do it? How do you, how are you this confident? Like I looked at you and I was like, whoa, but you're really, you have some crazy confidence. How'd you do that? How'd you, how'd you get that much confidence? That's crazy. And I know that she's probably determining that to be like, wow, like people are acknowledging my confidence. But in reality, this is such a disrespectful question because what they're actually saying is like somebody of your size shouldn't be this confident and yet you are. So this gotta be some kind of an anomaly, right? Like what the fuck are you doing to make yourself that confident? So, but hey, you know, I mean, to each their own, you see it however you want to, but I'm determining that shit to be disrespectful. Let me tell you. That's like somebody going like, Damn, you know, actually, I remember somebody did this to me one time. I remember I met these dudes up, right? And I was at the gym. And these dudes met up um, that I had went to high school with, but I didn't know they was there, right? And they were like, David, is that you? And I was like, oh, yo, what's going on? I dapped them up because they're black. You know, that's what you got to do. And I remember they're like, oh, um, do you have a girlfriend? I was like, yeah, I had a girlfriend at the time. And I was like, yeah, they're like, let me see, let me see. Because we were just exchanging pictures or whatever. He was showing me his kids or whatever. Uh, and then I was like, oh, yeah, this is my girlfriend. He was like, oh, oh, wow. I why, how'd you do it? And I was like, what you mean how I do it? What the fuck you talk about? What you mean how I do it? What, you, what, what, are, you, what are you implying right now? What are you saying? Like, I, like the process of me acquiring a female would be like far-fetched. Like the idea of me even looking at a woman is like crazy to this guy. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I'm just cool, I guess. I was like, what the fuck do you mean? What, how do I do it? I, the same way you did it with the, with the kid, right? What are you talking about, man? I don't know. I think this guy thought it was ugly or something. I don't think I'm that ugly. But it was kind of a little bit uncalled for, you know? And I, I knew it at the time, too. But I'm going to be a little nice. I'm going to be nice in scenarios, dude. But definitely, bro, what are you talking about? What you mean, how I do it? The fuck? The hell? And I'm sick of people thinking just because somebody is pretty that they're more valuable than you, for instance. I don't think that that's like any insignifier that somebody is better than you because they look better than you. You don't know that, dude. I could be just as cool as them. I just have my traits in different stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, dude. People come into my DMs, comments, on my lives. And, and the fact that this happens so often, that's crazy. Go, Hannah, how do you have so much confidence? And let me tell you, this is not a straight line. I didn't just wake up with confidence one day. I didn't even, like, was, I wasn't born into this world with confidence. Because you know, if you look around, you realize that the world discourages people from feeling confident. Because if you were confident of your own- I disagree. I, I mean, it depends on what you mean the world discourages you from being confident. Maybe in the spectrum of social media exists, so that incentivizes you to not go outside. Therefore, you lack human being communication skills in those particular aspects, maybe. But I'm pretty sure the world is- not like actively negating people from having confidence. That's a very weird way of saying that. I mean, we have literally entire social structures dedicated for people to communicate and be together and build up confidences. But anyway. Realize that the world discourages people from feeling confident. Because if you were confident of your own accord, then they couldn't sell you stuff, okay? So they don't what? want you to actually oh, just be confident. So what does this come back? Always comes back to capitalism in some way, dude. These people are so anti-capitalist, man. I fucking, I just, you know, I love it because like, 
the very means to which they discovered the the way to be obese is the what they hate the most. Isn't that crazy? Record. Then they couldn't sell you stuff, okay? How does that make sense though? Like, so you're saying that if you're confident, you can't buy stuff. If anything, I think if a person is confident, they are more willing to buy stuff because they're more free within themselves. If somebody was if somebody was less confident, I feel like that person could be easily manipulated into doing something because they don't want to start confrontation or they don't want to be within a realm where there's problems, if that makes any sense. So they don't want you to actually just be confident. I, I disagree. Secondly, we really... I think I disagree tremendously, dude. That almost doesn't even make any sense at all. I mean, she's on the right path, but I feel like she got the, the, she got the answers mixed up. Stuff, okay? So they don't want you to actually just be confident. Secondly, we really... Who is they? Why is it always they? Encourage people to source their confidence from really transient places. Like, oh, you'll feel confident once you've hit this goal weight or fit into that dress. Or once you have that foundation or once you have that hair color, once you inject your lips. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, a, it's things that are transient. I kind of agree with this. I think a lot of people place value on monetary means or um you know material objects and such and so forth i mean don't get me wrong i'm materialistic uh just like anybody is in terms of like things that i want or you know like i have things that cost money sure but i agree in the spectrum of most people in life at the end of your life most people are not looking at that time they got the new iphone or they bought that new car it might be cool for like one or two days but usually right after that you're like whatever dude and most people are finding real value especially at the end of their lifespans um, with the, with the abilities that they had in terms of like finding communication, getting married, having kids, like these big giant moments in your life that you only have really one or two of them. And it's never materialistic. So I really, really hate it when people think that they're going to be so happy when they finally get this, or they're going to be so happy when they finally get that car, that, that house or this iPhone or this thing. And then uh, ultimately they're not because it's not they're racing to the finish line, and once they eventually get it, they realize it was never a race to begin with. And that's really that's really sad. But, I mean, I agree with this on this front in terms of materialistic stuff. But don't get me wrong. Uh, it's okay to be materialistic to a certain degree. You shouldn't let it control your life. If you're making, like, really, like, no money at all, you should make more money, obviously. But after a certain point, money is just, like, whatever. But the, mu the human communication aspects, having people that you are responsible for and you care for and people around you, you know, that stuff's way more important in my mind. Where I source my confidence now, don't get me wrong, I did that. I have changed my perspective. I My confidence now comes from a really, like, strong foundational layer that won't be shaken. It like won't what? change as beauty standards change and it won't change as I get older. And that is that I unconditionally love myself. And I, Whenever I hear somebody say, like, I'm loving myself, I always, I always think of, like, a dude just in the bed beating off, dude. That's what I think, like, oh, I'm really loving myself tonight. I'm putting the, the, the fucking chicken grease on my shit. I'm waxing my shit, meat massaging through the roof, beat off blisters and everything. I know that's not what she's talking about, though, but that's just kind of what I interpret. It won't change as I get older. And that is that I unconditionally love myself. And I unconditionally love my body. I, I really, in, like, the way these people define how they care about themselves is just so weird to me. Because most of the time when people are talking about the way they love themselves, it's not in a very direct way. Most people are considering things, like, passively, right? Like, you love yourself in a very passive way. Like, if you ask, if you ask somebody, hey... Why do you love yourself? I'm sure they can give you a whole bunch of reasons, but most people are not thinking about it because most people have a lot of shit going on and they don't have really the time to really sit down and think about why they love themselves or like the key aspects of their life and this and that. And I think it could be beneficial for you to sit down and reflect. But I also think that most people are just not doing that in the same way that, you know, when you ask somebody, oh, why did you choose this person to be your wife or your husband? Most people are go, oh, I don't know. I just like, met this person i thought they were cool and things like that nobody's going like oh they were just so with this and that this happened like it's maybe that could happen but most people are just passively going through their lives and it takes a lot of work to actually like sit down and deliberately think about stuff so when i hear people say this stuff right i immediately question the authenticity of it because i don't actually know this person because like all, all the shit she's saying could be real but often i feel like it's probably not in sickness and in health and that means that my that's <sighs> I mean, sure, you could love yourself in sickness and in health, sure, but you should probably, if you really care for yourself and you are really truly confident within yourself, you should be confident enough to make the right decisions on your body's behalf, especially when it comes to health. That is crazy to somebody say in sickness and in health. Like, it's fine to love yourself. Love yourself now, 100%. Love yourself now. But 
you should also be working within the framework of how do I make this better, if that makes any sense. Conditionally love my body in sickness and in health. And that means that my confidence is always high. It's not, it cannot be shaken with the trends changing, with what other- I'm pretty sure I saw a couple of videos of this woman crying because somebody said that she was fat, but I could be wrong. People may say to me because my confidence is already here. I don't need your approval. It's easier said than done. And this is why I think that when people say, which <laughs> I remember I used to do this joke where I'd be like, my, oh, my dick is just so mad. It's just crazy how massive my big long John Silver is. It's insane. I real deal got that fruit by the meat. I got that ginormous megalodon massive meat. And then people would go, I just really think that if you did have a big penis, like you wouldn't be talking about it. And then I thought, so you're telling me the people that say they have small meats have big meats? Is that how that works? Um, I would never lie about the girth and the lengthiness of my penis, right? But I, I kind of understand what they're, they're coming from on these fronts. Like if you're really confident in yourself and somebody is like, you're like, oh, I'm really, I'm really like strong within myself and this and that. I don't know why so many people are so quick to tell me when it, it could be easily displayed through acts of not crying on social media, not complaining about things that are obviously in your control. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's too easy for somebody to do that. And I see this a lot when it comes to in the dating spectrum because like a lot of people are so quick to tell you how great they are. And that doesn't mean anything because I don't give a fuck if you can tell me that you're great. Everybody thinks they're great. But what do you, what, what do you have about you that can be like, you know, that's actually true because I'm, it's very easy for me to go, I'm handsome. I'm charismatic. I make, you know, I make money. I, I, I drive this car. I, I went to school and it's like, this is all great, but like, let's put it in some practicalities. Show me, don't tell me. Don't get me wrong. Makeup fashion amplifies that confidence, but it's already pretty high. If you're fat. Say this with me. I am not a before. I am not an after. If you need to go on TikTok and you need to listen to a fat lady point at you and tell you what to say while you're like 45, like it's okay. It's just a little weird to me, dude. I don't know. What, what happened to us, man? Like I feel like it was back in the day in the 20s and 30s where there was a farmer and he thought it was gay to have feelings, right? And don't get me wrong. This is obviously not a good thing. Um, you should have the ability to sort through your emotions, but it just kind of seems like we, we chose from one end to the other. And it's so drastic nowadays because people are just so cringy putting their emotions on display like this. This is TikTok. What are you doing? Why are you on TikTok making a duet with somebody who's also obese talking about some, I am not a before, I am not an after. What the fuck are you doing? I am who I am. And hey, what is this I supposed to do? Like, why are you so happy about this? Okay, I don't know. Maybe I just don't get it, dude. But I feel like these people have really weird ways of sorting through their, their emotions, dude. If you have to, all right, whatever, man. Exactly as I am. Fat as fuck. For the past year, it never feels like it's gonna be enough. I think we're gonna see this a lot more in the body positive space where we see people who have taken Ozempic or done weight loss surgery thinking that it was going to heal their body image. But here's what's gonna happen. I think they're gonna experience some temporary satisfaction in the body they have, but not because their body is smaller, because of the privileges that come in having a smaller body. So like making your body smaller is like a byproduct of that. I don't know, man. I, I When these people say these things, I you are, when you become smaller and you're getting these privileges that you guys speak on so highly, right? You do understand that these particular privileges that you're talking about are literally afforded to everybody in society. But the difference is you have weighed yourself out of those things. You have literally put on so much weight that the simple act of privileges, which is crazy to say because these privileges are literally things like bending over to tie your own shoes or being able to get up off of the floor when you fall down. You count these things as privileges when in reality, all they really are are things that you would have ordinarily been able to do but because you've eaten too much and put yourself out of that bracket you can no longer do and you're counting these things as privileges which is cringe you guys are you guys are on some different shit then um by the way i agree in the sense of like you should have you should always go at it from the right motivator but i feel like you can probably develop you can develop those motivation signals later on because i know there's a lot of guys for instance that go to the gym and you ask dudes why are you going to the gym it's usually one of two things right it's usually, man, I'm trying to get bitches or my girlfriend broke up with me, right? Those two. And then uh, those are, but those are in the same vein. 
and, or it's the right reason, which is I'm trying to become healthier. I'm trying to become, um, you know, muscled up and things such and so forth. I don't care what the reason is. You go to the gym. Some reasons are better than others. But oftentimes I feel like men, especially when they go to the gym, they realize that women don't really care if you have a giant six pack or big busty, muscly biceps and things like that. Most of the time, women don't even know what these things are. The amount of times that I've talked to girls and I was like, yeah, I did this, this workout, worked on my lattice and that, and I showed off the muscles. And you're like, what is that? But guys... Dude, guys are literally complimenting them all the time going to the gym, right? I was with a black guy, and another black guy walked up to the black guy I was with, and he was like, "Hey man, hey man, you you got a you 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 got a sickness? You got a sickness?" And my dude was like, "Huh? What, what do you mean?" He's like, "Well, you got all these lumps. You got all these lumps." And he started patting them, and it was like a nice occasion, you know what I'm talking about? Because it was funny, it was nice, it was cool, and that's happened to me a few times, right? Where a guy was walked up to me, he's like, you really doing that exercise really cool. You know, I, I like the way you're pulling back on that. You're doing a good job. I see you in here. You're doing a good job. That's great, right? But never in my entire existence of being on this planet has a woman ever complimented me at the gym or like in general on the body, which is fine. I mean, no, I mean, let me be honest. Of course, I've gotten compliments from women. I'm not going to say that I'm like not getting compliments, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's very different. So I feel like ultimately when you are working out, you're gay. That's just really what it comes down to because you're not appeasing women most of the time. You're appeasing men. So you're just like... I don't know. Maybe it's not gay, but it's kind of gay. It's a little gay if you think about it. It's kind of like the way I like to look at like porn, right? I don't even want to know. Like when I when I used to watch hentai, right? Which I don't recommend watching anymore because if you're watching pornography and the woman within the pornography has bigger boobs than her entire head, that's an issue, right? That's a giant issue. And I'm sick of how many times have I seen, I don't know, stepmom shit that makes no fucking sense at all. Like this, you know, giant big breasted woman comes into the bathroom while this guy's taking a shit. It's always the worst too when it comes to the the dubs, the English dubs, because I can't read that fast. And these dudes talk quick. And these dudes are always like, oh, Mrs. Margaret, what are you doing in here? Jimmy, I know you want this. Come here. Come talk to me about your feelings. But I, I don't know if I can. I... I've never done this before. It's so cringy. Dude. I'm losing so much erection. Anyway, I'm watching this shit, right? And I'm I'm noticing that all these drawings are probably drawn by men. So ultimately, I'm watching I'm gay by proxy. Like I'm watching a man's handwriting. I'm I'm watching a man's drawing and beating off to that. I'm gay. You know what I'm talking about? So I know that um ultimately the most heterosexual thing you can do, which is watching heterosexual porn, ultimately means you're gay. In the same way that if you're working out for women, women don't care, so you're gay because you're working out for men. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what we're talking about. I don't know. I have no idea what we're even saying right now. Experience. Oh, yeah. Um, go into the gym for the right reasons, obviously, but you can probably build up those reasons later on once you come to the realizations that the, the initial reason why you went to the gym or worked out or became healthier may not be the best reason, but at least you're getting healthier. Temporary satisfaction in the body they have, but not because their body is smaller, because of the privileges that come in having a smaller body. Walking. I love this creator. I think she's so sweet and adorable, and it breaks my heart because I think there are a lot of people out there who feel similarly to her. When weight loss has been your North Star, when losing weight has been the goal of your life, but when you lose weight and your feelings about yourself don't change, it starts to feel like it was all for nothing. Think Most of the time though, when people do lose weight, I mean, sure, there are scenarios where people lose weight and they don't feel better or like they feel like the same or whatever. Uh, I would say anecdotally, especially, I've met a lot of people that have lost weight and mostly I would say 100% of the time, Every single person I've talked to, which has potentially been hundreds, have all told me they feel amazing after they lost weight because most of the time you don't even realize you feel like shit until you realize you feel like shit and you got rid of that shit feeling, right? It's probably like when – like older people, right? I talk to older people a lot and these, these dudes – Never had the internet ever in their entire life. I literally remember this when I had the internet when I was a children and a teenager. And I was like, dude, the internet is like the bee's knees. It's like the best, right? Because I grew up in an era where the internet wasn't even a thing. And then it trans slowly transitioned into being a thing. And now everybody uses it, right? But I remember people used to call me gay. And they used to say that I was a nerd for using the internet. Even watching YouTube, people used to think it was a niche, crazy category. Look at me now, right? But I remember like parents and older people would say, 
um, oh, I don't want to watch that. Ah, nah, nah, it's not for me. But what do you know? Like the amount of old people nowadays that I talk to that have YouTube, have smartphones that that had that use the internet. These people had no idea what they were missing going through their lives, and they had they didn't have the internet, right? It's like that. It's like knowing that there is something there and that you could possibly have access to it, but you just decide not to because you think it's out of your realm of possibilities, or maybe you just think it's gay or something like that. It's like that. When you're fat, you don't know that you have problems until you lose those problems, and then you realize you wake up to the truth, and you're like, oh my God, I have been working under this illusion for so long, and I cannot believe that it took me that long to realize I was having a problem, and that's the worst. That's the fucking worst, dude. Go going through years to potentially decades of your life having these problems and then realizing those problems could have never existed and all that pain all that suffering could have never been there if you just decided to do the other thing Think about your life when you're dieting versus when you're not dieting when you're not dieting you're eating all the foods you love you're hanging which is not a good thing by the way um there's a reason why anything is okay within moderation but once it becomes a problem it becomes a problem you know what i'm talking about like for instance pornography is fine but once it becomes an issue and you're consuming it three four five six times a day then it's a problem video game addiction becomes a problem because it's fine if you want to play a few hours of a video game every week right you want to play i don't know whatever you play a few hours of video game a day it's fine but once you're doing it your entire day and you're just like leaving everything on the side you're like you're 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 you're, you're forsaking chores you're not running errands you're not working this shit becomes a problem anything becomes a problem so when you're eating whatever you want it may seem good but in reality it's a it's it's the devil in disguise dude it's an illusion it feels good because you're doing what you want, but ultimately it's still not good for you. You should have the ability to say no to things. You know, you're doing your thing, you're having fun, but- Eating shit, listen dude, okay? You're eating whatever you want, you're having fun is such a crazy ass statement. All right, what are you doing first of all? If you're like having sex with food, that could be cool. Like fine, you want like, you know, double dip your dick in a pineapple, right? I watched a woman had sex with a corn. Right? A whole cob of corn or whatever. She said it was delightful. And I don't know. I don't know. I've never, I don't have a vagina. So I don't know if it would be delightful or not. Right? And I think somebody told me the other night that you can't even use OnlyFans with food, which is crazy to me. Not even like hot sauce. You can't use hot sauce. You know, black guys love hot sauce on the toes and stuff like that. Why can't you have that? That's discrimination right there. Racism to the nth degree. But if you're talking about you're enjoying life, you're eating whatever you want, you're having fun. What, what do you mean? First of all, eating food first and foremost should be used for what it is, which is a fuel source. You can enjoy your food in the sense of like, you should make it taste good and you should enjoy eating it. Great. But you shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be like shoveling food. Like, oh man, this is, <laughs> this is so much fun. What are you talking about, man? What's like going to an amusement park? But you feel shame and guilt because you're not on a diet. But when you are on a diet, there's a lot of rules. There's a lot of restriction. Yeah, that's the entire fucking point. And so you have to miss out on all of those things that you- uh, I hate to tell people this, but that's kind of what life is. You're going to have to sacrifice things in order to- I don't know. Sometimes you don't get anything out of it at all. Like sometimes you have to do something for somebody and maybe you don't get anything at all. And I know I have a hard time because I do a lot for a lot of people and I don't get any rec recognition for it sometimes. And I feel like I'm not being truly appreciated for it, but that's okay because I know that I'm doing something and it's good for these people. And I don't need somebody to tell me good job. I don't need somebody to say you're doing the right thing, but ultimately I know that you would feel better if you did. Right. Um, so if you're somebody that does a lot of things for somebody, or you think that you're responsible for other people and you don't get that positive recognition that you deserve, I want to tell you right now, you're doing a good thing. You're doing something really, really helpful to other people. And I know those people may not fully be able to understand how you're able to do that for them. And they're not looking at it as anything other than what you're supposed to do. You're doing more and that's good. You should always look at yourself as like a, I did this. This is great. It doesn't matter that they're not looking at it like that. I'm looking at it like that. You are an amazing person for doing more than what you should. And I really appreciate you for that. Good job. That should be that. That's like, you know, good job. Right. Um, and that's like what life is, right? Having a diet is no difference than having to drive somebody to school or, um, you know, having working a job and things such and so forth. It's a responsibility that you have to have. And I know it sucks because a lot of times I don't want to do those things. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. But you don't, you can't. It's just what it is. It, it, part of the things about being an adult is not, is doing the things that you don't want to do. That what make, that's what makes you a strong individual. And a diet is just like that. Okay. Um, a calorie deficit, uh, working on yourself, building your muscles, building up the diet, um, eating nutritious food is a amazing achievement and not doing those things um, is 
you can do it every once in a while, but it shouldn't be looked at as like, it's not responsible to do that, especially if you have people around you. You once loved. So when you do all of those things to lose weight, and then it's you, the ultimate payoff for a lot of people, especially if you've been suffering for an extended period of time. Don't even get to the body that you want to have. If you have unrealistic expectations of what your body is going to look like post weight loss, that's dumb. Have realistic expectations. If you're setting goals for yourself and they're unobtainable goals, like if I set a goal for myself and I was like, I'm going to go to the gym for a year. And by the end of that year, I'm going to look like Ronnie Coleman from 2003. I'm dumb. I'm not going to look like Ronnie Coleman from 2003. I don't have the genetics. I'm not taking the steroids. I don't, not going to look like that. But if your goals are... I just want to be healthier. I want to be more attractive. I want to chisel down myself more appropriately. That's awesome. That's That should be your goal. Be a very general perspective of it and have it be in the realm of possibility. Because anytime you set a goal that's unobtainable, you're going to be disappointed when ultimately you don't hit that goal. You feel like you've been sold a bag of lies, which you have been. There no, be that's not how that works. If it, The only lie that you've been sold is the one that you put yourself under by believing that you can do something that you're obviously not capable of doing. And that's okay that you're not capable of doing it. There are people on this world that are capable of doing things that you're not able to. That's okay because that doesn't mean you're less of a person for those things. That just means that person's an anomaly or they just had, I don't know, like they're in the right place at the right time. It doesn't mean that you're less of a person or you should look down upon yourself because you didn't get snatched in the way that you wanted to or you weren't able to get those 20 inch biceps or whatever the fuck. Don't look at it like that, dude. Look how much work you have done. Look how much achievement, look how much growth you've done. Look at it like that. Don't look at it as like, oh, I want to set this unrealistic this unrealistic version of myself that I'm never going to reach. And then when you do eventually never reach that goal, you're you're just sitting there like, man, dude, what the fuck? It's okay. Don't worry. Set realistic goals. Who watch this video and dismiss what I have to say because of the body size that I existed. And I don't need to qualify my experience. Or the way that you're looking at it is like you're literally dismissing weight loss in and of itself because you think that there is no reason to lose weight ultimately because the, the, the goal that you have set forth to yourself is not possible. If your goal is to look like, I don't fucking know, Margot Robbie from 2016 or bradley cooper from 2014 like it's ridiculous you have unrealistic expectations that is a terrible reason not to lose weight why would you ever set yourself off for failure like that that is one of the dumbest things you can possibly do that's literally like somebody saying i cannot make all the money in the world therefore i'm not gonna make any money that is dumb that is dumb it's like that is the worst way of thinking about it man or my expertise but I will anyway. I'm a licensed mental health counselor. Who's That's been terrible, dude. This person, look, I'm not saying that she's bad or good when it comes to giving up mental health advice, but this whole video has just been an entire video of gaslighting you into believing that if you lose weight or if you have this, I don't think maybe this woman sucks at her job. In the eating disorder field for the last eight years. And what I can tell you is missing. You know, part of me, when I see these these influencers and big people like this say that they, oh, you know, I, I'm a professional this and I'm a professional that, I always think like, really? That is crazy as fuck. People employ you? That is insane. How does that even work? How much money do you make a year? How many, how many, how many people I employ you? What is the, what is the list? How many people do you have? That is crazy to me, dude. Missing from this conversation. That just kind of goes to show me that like, some people just want to hear what they want to hear, you know, like, yes, men, like, yes, queen. It's crazy. Is the conversation on how harmful eating disorders are. Everyone wants to talk about Yeah, by the way, they like to consider eating disorders as like literally a calorie deficit. So if you decided to like, I don't know, cut out sodas. So, so you, if you cut out a soda, you're basically like ED, which is crazy. I, <laughs> or like if you wanted to eat healthier, so you're choosing to eat more fruits and vegetables and things such as so forth, high protein foods, ED. Crazy, right? Anything other than just eat everything and everything is apparently an ED. The harms of obesity, but nobody wants to talk about the harms of eating disorder. Because it's like few and far between compared to the amount of people suffering from um, obesity. So that's usually why people talk about obesity more than eating. The world has made it explicitly clear they would rather us exist in eating disorder bodies than in a fat one. When Again. The, the definitions of EDs are incredibly, um, incredibly vague. Like they have very, very like, oh, you decided to not eat that donut? ED. No, it's not an ED. That shit was like 500 fucking calories and I only have 500 calories left. And it turns out when I go home, I want to eat that entire big ass fucking meal of meaty meat and good vegetables. And that would be way more fulfilling than me than, than me eating that donut. And I divorced my health, my self-esteem, 
from my body size. Crazy. Uh, that's insane. This person is literally telling you some straight up baloney hogwash bullshit. You have, can, I, can we just go back really quickly and hear that fucking crazy shit? When I divorced my health, my self-esteem from my body size. Can you imagine having all the, like health and body size and you're telling me that you dismiss those things. You do, mentally, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did mentally. Do you think that benefits you? believing a lie like that because that is a fundamental lie if you're telling me that your body is like three four hundred pounds and you told me that you dismissed health from your body size do you think that's still you think that that's gonna like manifest into reality because you know that's not how that works right like if somebody came in with a gunshot wound it was like oh man my gut feels really bad the doctor's like yeah you've been shot you're like nah 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 i'm good i'm good I don't have a problem, actually. I'm going to get out of here. Do you think that the bullet hole would just, like, eject out of you like your Wolverine and heal up? No, that's not how that works. In the same way that you think, I'm going to divorce my body size from health. Somehow you think that you're going to be healthy at 350. That's not how that works. I guess it's crazy. These people say the craziest stuff I've ever heard in my life, dude. Here's what happened. First, I was really sad. I because you're fucking believing a lie. I had to grieve never getting the dream body that I had worked my entire life for. I had to grieve all of the privileges that I once had and no longer do. What are you talking about? What, pri dude, what? What? What is your, first of all, what is your dream body? Second of all, what do you mean you had to say goodbye to all the privileges that you're never going to have again? So is it impossible for you to lose weight? What are you saying? How can you sit there and say, I had to just acknowledge that I'm never going to have these privileges. You're not like, it's not a chronic illness. You can lose weight at any time. Why are you condemning your body to a lifetime of badness when you could just lose weight and then have those privileges again? Why do you think it's impossible? What is going on? To face the reality that I'm going to exist in a body that people are going to judge just because of how I look. You don't have to, though. You didn't have to live in this body. You could lose weight right now. You can lose weight right now. It's not impossible. I believe in you. But when I reacclimated to my own value, when I learned to reconnect to this- Brainwashing yourself, man. Can you fucking believe it? Some people- some people don't even need external sources. They just literally just say, I just don't want to do anything anymore. I'm literally just gonna- I'm just going to say, fuck it. I'm literally just going to say, fuck it. This is just what I got. And you know what? All well. I'm just going to be fat. I'm going to never be able to walk upstairs appropriately ever again. I turned the bottle cap wrapper into a penis. Did you guys see it? This body, the body I have, not the body that I desire. When I changed my definition of health from what my blood work is doing and what my BMI is doing. That's what I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> what? Dude, hold on. Can I go back really quickly, dude? That is insane. That I desire. And I changed my definition of health from what my blood work is doing and what my BMI is doing and instead took a holistic approach of- Dude, if you're going to the doctor and your doctor is telling you that you're, you have high blood pressure and your BMI is through the roof and you just go, I'm okay. I'm good. That's not that. Nope. Mm -mm, I'm that. Nope. I, that's not how I look at it. Uh, Okay, you don't have to look at it like that, but that doesn't mean that's not going to negatively affect you. How do you how do you live your life like that where you're just sitting there going like, "No, nah, this is fine. Like I'm just okay." Now, even though you're telling me that this is literally killing me, I'm okay. It's fine. Okay, but that's not how it works in reality. You're Dude, this woman is literally admitting that she has bad health and she's just going, "But it's okay because I know it's not the truth." All right. Um what my blood work is doing and what my BMI is doing and instead took a holistic approach of how's my mental health? How am I speaking to myself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The things that really fucking matter. The really uh, forget about the fact that you're going to die in like 10 years. Forget about all the problems you're going to have. Forget about all that shit. It's about how I'm talking to myself. How am I thinking about myself? What are you talking about? You're dying. That's not something that's not good. Overall, how am I being treated when I go to the doctor? What the Dude, you're, you're making me upset. You're making me really upset. Your doctor is sitting there going like, damn, you real deal running bricks through your veins right now. We need to lower that body fat percentage. You're big as hell. And you're going, I can't believe that you would tell me that I'm fat. I cannot believe that you're telling me my blood work is through the roof. And I got high blood pressure, pre-diabetic, and I have joint problems and all this other stuff. I don't believe this. I'm out of here. You're treating me incorrectly. And your doctor's just going, yeah, but like. That's, but you know that that's not okay fine all right even though you're unhealthy you can leave you're an autonomous person why would you think that person's bad
there was a shift that began to happen. It began yeah, to- the, the shift was the weight going up. To see the way we treat- The building that she was sitting in was like fucking leaning over. Fat people is the problem, not that being fat is the problem. You're, you're delusional. You have some real, like you have some mental issues that you need to sort through. And if you are a mental health professional, that fucking goddamn, I feel bad for anybody that's listening to you. That's insane. Oh my God. People are paying you? Good luck. As long as diet culture exists, Good I'm going to be told I'm wrong. But I have something that those people don't. Big belly button nine inches deep. <laughs> Back folds. Joint problems. I feel bad for anybody that's employing this woman. Oh my Jesus. And that is unwavering self-peace. When I lay my head on the pillow at night, I'm not thinking about my body size. I'm not about? thinking about how many calories I ate. I'm not feeling bad for my clothes not fitting if they don't. I'm not feeling bad if I can't fit into a booth or a public place. My brain is filled with so many other things now. This woman is a walking red flag. This woman is literally talking about things that she doesn't have to deal with and going, but I've just accepted it. Like, I can't fit in boots anymore. Clothes don't fit me. But I'm not looking at it as problems, even though I know they're problems. I'm just refusing to look at them. I'm just never going to ever deal with these problems because I don't think they're actually problems. That's like literally sitting in a house that's on fire and you're just sitting in the middle of the house and just going, this is okay. This is fine. I don't need to change. Why? Why? Oh, why have you bestowed upon yourself all of these problems and refused to do nothing about it? Because you decided that none of them are problems. Oh my God. What level of indoctrination have you put upon yourself to try to convince it that you don't have issues? This woman is crazy. This woman is a therapist. Crazy. Oh my God. I'm living the dream life, the non-dieting life. Can you imagine that? I got joint problems, my blood pressure through the roof. I constantly have headaches. I got all these problems, but I'm living a dream life. Oh, I can get rid of those problems? Fat phobia, fat phobia, fat phobia. But in a way that doesn't have guilt and shame. You're crazy. And so now my North Star gets to be whatever I want. Dude, this woman is like an adult, right? Like this is a this is a solid woman adult right here. This is a person that like is contributing in society and they're acting like a child. Just let that sink in. This is a solid woman right here. This is a, a grown ass woman and this they're acting like a children. Because the possibility of dreaming is back. And what the fuck is wrong with you? What are you talking about? Do you not live in reality? Why are you talking like this? Why? Oh, it doesn't require me to change my body size to do so. I know that sometimes. Thank God that shit is over, bro. That shit is that that woman was literally the next level of cringe. Times in life we give out negative attention to people who don't deserve it. Like this commenter getting a response from me is antithetical to everything Damn, that I believe in. She's only getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Wait, why would you reply to this, dude? If you don't want to reply to it, don't reply to it, dude. You can make a whole video on this shit. And don't be upset that that person left the comment if you're going to reply to the the comment. Commenter like that. getting a response from me is antithetical to everything that I believe in. But I also know that I'm very lucky to be somebody who has come to terms with their body. I would not call that luck. Like, it, to a certain degree, it could be very good for you. Like, if you were somebody that was missing appendages or body parts or you were just somebody that had problems and there was nothing you could do to change those things, it is very beneficial to acknowledge those things as problems but also things that you cannot change. Fine. Great. Awesome. Right? If there's some things that you cannot change, that's great to acknowledge them as things that you cannot change. If you're fat AF, if you're big and you're acknowledging those things as things that you cannot change, you're dumb. There's nothing else to say than that. Has a clear understanding of who they are and what they look like and how they've led their life for the most part over the last 10 to 15 years. So I know that this commenter is being ridiculous because not only have I weighed pretty close to the same for almost 10 years and been the same size for almost 10 years. I know that whether or not I've gained weight or lost weight is simply between me and my doctor. Okay. And my value as a person has- It's obviously not between you and your doctor if you're commenting. If you're making full on content about this shit and you're inviting people to talk about it by also commenting on what they're commenting on. It's kind of interesting. All right, whatever, bro. Changed with any fluctuation of those numbers. So to anybody else who's been getting comments like this, I just want to remind you. A pretty lax comment, dude. This is, this is nothing, man. Uh, this is this is real low. This is like nothing. Like I, 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 this would be like me, somebody going like, David, you're gay. You're gay. I mean, I know I'm not gay, right? But it's okay if you want to call me gay. Now, you would have to really say something ridiculous 
um, to make me feel like I'm hurt in some way. You know what I'm talking about? Like if somebody was like, I'm going to shove my entire big Sasquatch meat in your mouth. I'm going to have that shit. But your mouth is real deal. Not the best. Your mouth don't even really t feel that the, the goodest it possibly can. Like even though your mouth was all right for like 10 minutes, that shit real deal is not even making me feel like that good personally. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make my dick do a backflip because your mouth ain't it. I would feel kind of bad by that. Yeah. But if you just call me gay, I'd be like, whatever. That's like that. That your value as a person also hasn't changed. It depends on what you mean by your value as a person. Like if you have a very lax definition of value as person, sure. I'm sure your value hasn't changed. If you gained like 50 extra pounds or 200 extra fucking pounds, I'm sure that you could determine those things as value not changed. But it's very ignorant to assume that that just means in general because value is, is determined based off of things that are not in your control. Like, for instance, are you taking care of somebody? Are you working for somebody? Are you employed? Are you going to need this body in 10 years? Are you going to need this body in 10 years without problems? Like, sure, your value as a person and the way you're thinking about it hasn't changed. But most definitely in a few years or even right now, depending on what circumstance you're in, it has definitely changed. Based on whether or not you've gained weight or lost weight over the past months, years, whatever. I wonder if people look at me and their first thought is, oh, she's pretty. Like, as a fat woman. Why are you thinking about it like that? Dude, these people have the worst self-confidence I've ever seen in my life. And they just fully put it on display. Like, they're literally showing off the most vulnerable parts of themselves. And they're putting them on display as if it's like a... Like wearing your heart on your sleeve, you know, and, and, and like directly on you, dude. Like a big giant target sign right in front. Like, yeah, shoot this. This is what you go for, guys. Dude, I get it. Like you, you're going through some emotions or whatever. Talk to a therapist. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Not TikTok. Why are you going on TikTok going, I wonder if people look at me and they think that's a pretty girl. Why? Why are you looking at it like that? That'd be, man. Uh, you, know, you know what I wonder? When I'm outside and I'm wearing sweatpants, I'm wondering... I wonder how many people are looking down at my Sasquatch shit. I wonder if anybody's looking at that big Ray William Johnson I got. That fucking massive Megalodon. Like, why does it matter? Why does it matter, dude? Why do you care so much? It's, again, like the poor self-image. Just existing. I wonder if people think that I'm pretty. Why? Or if their first thought is, oh, she's fat. That's probably the most, yeah, that's probably the first thought, probably for most people. I mean, that's like the key characteristic. Usually people, when they see you for the first time, they look towards the thing that they see the most. So usually when I'm on the street, people tell me it's the first thing they see is my mustache. So most people are thinking about mustache. But if you're big, most definitely people are thinking big, right? I know there's very pretty girls that they go, wow, she's banging. Or, um, damn, she got a fat ass, right? I hear that too. But um, yeah, probably probably you're fat, but it's okay because you don't have to be fat, which is great. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, if a girl is being objectified for her booty cheeks, she can't really do much to alleviate that problem. But for you, if you're if you're worried about what people think about you in the realm of being fat, you don't gotta be fat. You can be not fat. She shouldn't be wearing that, or she's fat. Ew. <laughs> but Damn. I I, I can't help but wonder if like people just see me out in public wearing a cute outfit that I feel good in and I feel that I look pretty in. I wonder if people also think the same. Why are you looking at it like this, dude? Why? First of all, it's a very subjective thing to wear a pretty outfit, okay? Like, what you think is pretty could obviously not be pretty to me. Like, I can, I can automatically authenticate that. Like, I know I look, I think I look, like I'm wearing something and I go, this is a perfect, nice street outfit, right? And then I remember one time, not even one time, I was wearing like a casual outfit that I would usually wear and people thought I was from like the South. They were like, dude, where are you from? You from like Texas, Tennessee, whatever. And I was like, nah, I'm from here. And they were like, oh, why are you dressed like that? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, why are you dressed like you're fucking Morgan Wallace or whatever? And I was like, I, am I? Like, what do you, I didn't even know I was fucking doing that. I thought it was a nice street outfit. Apparently I look like fucking Woody from fucking Toy Story. I didn't know. I fucking, had, I thought it was a nice outfit. But the point I'm making is, so what? You know, so if you think you look good in that outfit, you look good in that outfit. That's what it is. Wear whatever you want. But then again, like, dude, like, why is this such, why is this on your mind so heavily? Like, it's great to look good, generally speaking, but these thoughts are going to get you nowhere. Or if they just think she's fat. Yeah, that's what Ew. Oh. And I feel like it's more likely 
that Probably. than it is to think that I'm pretty. Why does it matter? Because that's just the society. That it's we're not listen, dude. It's too easy for these people to dismiss this shit. Oh, it's just society. That's just what society thinks. It's not like people are autonomous human beings that have their own thought patterns and think not, they're not hive mind. Dude, you are putting too much value on what other people think, especially when you don't even know who they are or what they are. They could just be like, no, it's just like, why are you even putting yourself in this bracket? This makes no sense to me. We're living in, especially with what? the society that we're living in, especially with it'd be nice if somebody's first thought when they looked at me was that I'm pretty. You're, you're putting way too much value in somebody what somebody thinks, man. This is, uh, you know, honestly speaking, it really depends on what somebody thinks. Like, I know that it's great if you want to compliment me. Please compliment me, I, right? That's cool. But I think it should be really dependent on, like, you, do you really care what other people think? Or do you care what somebody specifically thinks? Like, if you're in a relationship, that should be more valuable to you than what somebody randomly on the street thinks, right? And then also, I also want to point this out. You will never actually know if somebody randomly on the street thinks however they think because you're not gonna read a you're not gonna read their minds like you're Charles Xavier. You don't have like a magical ball that you're gonna be able to see the future and the, whatever they're gonna hear them talk about you randomly in private. It's not how that works. So if you're putting so much value in what somebody else thinks about you and it's a meaningless thing, it's never you're never ever ever gonna find out. Why are you thinking about it? Why is this so heavily on you? It's like, it's such, it's such a meaningless thought pattern. And like, obviously people's opinions of you don't matter. You can't say that your opinion, people's opinions on you don't matter. This entire video is dedicated to how you think people should or would see you out in public. That is like, what are you talking about? Did you do? Why then just say, just don't even make the video then. Don't even make the video. Like when you're, when you were, when you were recording this part, you should have just said, oh, well. You know, even though I just made this entire video and I'm like literally about to contradict everything I just said right now. Uh, yeah, you know what? I should just not even post this video. That's what you should have done. Instead, you're like st making a fucking whatever, dude. They don't matter. Sure. Not if you feel beautiful. Not if you feel pretty. That's all that matters. Sure. But I still... Hey, always with a butt. Always with a butt. Can't help thinking about it. Because you know that's not the fucking truth for you, dude. You fucking... Man, don't bullshit me, dude. I had weight loss surgery 13 years ago. And really? God damn, dude, that's tough as hell, dude. What's up with people getting weight loss surgery and still being big? And here's what they didn't tell me. They didn't tell me that the short-term side effects that were only supposed to last the first year would last well into year five and six. They didn't tell me that 100% of weight regain was not only possible, but probable. They I see these people talking a lot, and I always think, I get it. If somebody tells you something and they it, it, it's not actually what it is, and there's not ways for you to research it, like I'll give you an I'll give you a, I know this girl who's a teacher, and they were like, "Listen, we need you to be in this classroom. It's a great classroom. It's like no problem with it. We're gonna pay you this good amount of money. You're gonna come in as a substitute, and you're gonna do this and this and this, right? Just basic stuff." She went to the school, and they butter biscuited her shit. The kids were terrible. They were throwing papers and fucking flipping tables, and not only was the job description that they gave her not the accurate one, but she had to do things that she wasn't even supposed to be doing. So she had no break. She had to take care of the kids constantly and all this other stuff. That, okay, you can say they lied to you. They gave you an illusion of what it was. When it comes to weight loss surgeries, five years ago, right? You had weight loss surgery five years ago, however, however long ago she said. Were you incapable of doing your own research? Were you incapable of finding these things out yourself, organically speaking, looking further into it, finding the best results for you, seeing if you could do something organically or different? Why is it always so easy for these people to sit there and go, it was their fault. They did this to me and I did that. I'm not saying that the people that gave her the weight loss surgery are not held to some type of responsibility, but it's just all the time I see these people complaining about the decisions that they made, that they had full autonomy to make. And they always cede all of the responsibilities that they should have had themselves onto somebody else. And I always say this, if you're gonna get weight loss surgery or go on any type of like drug to reduce your weight, I always recommend doing it organically first because at least in those particular scenarios, you're gonna suffer the least amount of consequences. But go off, queen. That 100% of weight regain was not only possible, but probable. If you got weight loss surgery, I don't know what kind of bariatric surgery she got, 
and you were, let's say, 500 pounds, and then you lost, say, 200 pounds, so that would have put you at 300 pounds, and then you regained at post-weight loss surgery, meaning like something drastically happened to you, medical intervention, surgery, and you regain that weight, that is not only concerning, that is very unhealthy because like the amount of stuff that they have to do in order to like, what, what kind of weight loss surgery, first of all, because like, this life-changing surgery, like the way you live your life is gonna be drastically changed afterwards. So if she regained all her weight, Man, not only did you go backwards, but now you have a complication in your life that is so incredibly, like, drastically, like, bad, and you you have nothing to show for it. They didn't tell me that I was going to develop acid reflux and digestional distress that makes eating hard today. They didn't tell and me. And you're still fat? Me that even though I might see a change in my lab work in the immediate future, that that was most likely because of correlation not causation. They didn't tell me that the inner hatred wouldn't go away. Well, well, first of all, bitch, you can't fucking blame them for that. What the fuck are you talking about? See, this is what I'm talking about. This woman's just like throwing responsibility for no reason, dude. You're a grown woman. You're a grown woman. Get over yourself. Stop trying to put all your responsibility on everybody else when you decided to make your own decision and you decided that this was going to be right for you. How can you in any world decide that it's somebody else's fault for something that you did? You decided to gain the weight, you decided to get surgery, and you decided to gain that weight back. Why is it somebody else's fault? It's not. It's your fault. Just because you had surgery. There is no surgery for body image. That work is only done in your mind. All of this work is done in your fucking mind. What are you taught, man? Get the fuck out of my face. I'm sick of these people, man. Sick of it. Sick of it. Anyway, we're going to end the video here. Um, if you want to... <sighs> If you watch the video in its entirety, sorry. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in eyes. E-E-Y-E, -E -Y -E, I. Yeah, E-Y-E, -E, and then I guess apostrophe S because they're they belong to you, eyes. They're beautiful things. I often wonder why we don't have more protection for eyes since they're incredibly delicate organisms. And um, I don't see why we don't have things covering our face all the time because, like, you can just lose them at any time. But I guess that doesn't happen very often. So maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't matter. Okay? It doesn't matter. Your eyes are beautiful, by the way. Your eyes are fantastic. Very shapely. Very, very color-oriented. I love the shape of them, the color, the way that they look around, and, and, and the way that you can see with them. That's awesome. That's really great. And plus, you're taking care of your eyes by drinking water. As you know, water is one of the most important, uh, what, what's the word? Uh, lubricants, one of the most important ingredients for your body. So the fact that you're drinking it on the daily and you're, you're incentivizing it is really, really nice. And like I said earlier in the video, when I was complimenting you on your decision-making skills and being responsible, I want to congratulate you again. I think that it should be emphasized, even though I feel like this is something that people should be doing in general, you should know that you're doing it purposefully and you should be rewarded for it. You're doing a great thing. You're doing a fantastic thing. Don't give up. You're doing amazing. You're a fantastic person. Good job. I congratulate you. You're amazing. You're beautiful and you're awesome. Thank you for anybody that's a member. Thank you for anybody that subscribes. If you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and my Discord server and my second channel where I upload stream highlights. Anyway, guys, um, enjoy the rest of your day.